You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor, O oh Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We gather, O oh Lord, this afternoon to give you praise, to adore you, O oh Jehovah God, Spirit of the living God. We honor you. We honor you. We acknowledge you. We bless your name. We worship you. In the name of Jesus. Rande bo shekete ne bo shatala bakande re 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 kaye ne re bo si ana makata ya la bakan rasete ne bo si ana rabasi na 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 rikete ne bezan roba sona makaya la ba 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 rikete ne bezan da rabaka da gadash shaya da maso ya na mande ya masata la bakana. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Spirit of power, we welcome you. Spirit of might, we welcome you, Jesus. Shere bo si andara bakanda la 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 la. Rande ze katala bakanda re bo mo mi ze katene bo su. Kaya la ba ze kataya la ba sata la bakanda re 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 bo su. Kaya la ba sota ya. We worship you, Jesus. Shanda raba sete lebuzana. Ro bregedi abakata la baganda raba sete lebegedi. Rande bo se kata la bagana re na 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 na. Rakata ba 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 ba. Rakata raka ba 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 sata la bagana. We welcome you. We welcome you, Spirit of Truth. We welcome you. Spirit of truth, we welcome you. Spirit of truth, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. As we gather, take your place. As we gather, come and reign. Come and take over. Come and take full preeminence. Holy Spirit of the Living God. Shena na 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 di. So brenda kaya raba sota la bagada varere ne busota la bagada. There's nothing one more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare your living world. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted. The sweetest of life when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Oh 
of your glory Lord even as we gather this afternoon Lord we thus for you we long for you Lord that we may experience your presence Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. We need your presence. Your presence. We need the manifestation of your presence, Lord. Somebody cry out for the presence of the living God. Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, oh. Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, oh. Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, oh. Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, oh. Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, oh, Holy Spirit, carry me, oh, carry me, in the month of July, carry me, oh, carry me, to the place of victory.
Roho wa Bwana utuongoze Roho wa Bwana utuongoze Roho wa Bwana utuwezeshe Tusidame tusidame exalt you, Lord we magnify you we declare you are God alone and there is no other God besides you hallelujah son of God you are lifted high Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. In this new man, we declare the Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. Oh, the Lamb of God is lifted the Son of God is lifted up. Oh, the Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. Oh, the Son of God is lifted up. The Son of God is lifted up. Oh, the Lamb of God is lifted up. The Son of God.
Father, we thank you. We bless your name as you bring us into a new month. I just want us to make some confessions before the Lord for the month of July. Let us look at um, Psalms 44 verse 4. And we want to make some confessions declaring who God is. Amen. Psalms 44 verse 4 and 5. Thou art my king. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Verse 5. Okay. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. I want us to declare that God is king this month. I want you to just open your mouth and invite God to rule and reign in the month of July. Declare that this month you are my king, O oh God. Ask the Lord to command victories for you this month. Declare that in the month of July you are going to push down your enemies. And in his name we are going to trample those who rise up against us in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, King of all glory. We exalt your name even in this first day of the seventh month of, Ju of, of 2021. On on this first day of July 2021, we are decreeing and declaring that you, O oh God, are our King. You are my King, O oh God. You are my King, O oh God. You are our King, O oh God. We are your people, Jehovah my God. We have no other God. We have no other King. We have no other that we desire to worship. Our hearts are fixed on you, Jesus. This afternoon, we decree and declare that you are our King. You are our King. As we enter the month of July, let the gates of this month open for us. Let the ancient gates open for the King of Glory in the month of July. Ancient gates in Kenya open for the King of Glory to rule and reign in Kenya in the month of July. In the name of Jesus, for the gates of the nations, we speak to the gates. Ancient gates in the nations. Ancient gates in the nations open on the first day of July. And let the King of Glory enter the month of July. Somebody online, somebody in another nation, in another place, decree and declare on this exalted altar of God that his gates are opening, the gates of the nation are opening, ancient gates in our families are opening for the king of glory, ancient gates in our cities, they are opening up for the king of glory we say Abba Father, you are the king of glory, our hearts belong to you, our nations belong to you, our cities belong to you, our families belong Belong to you, Maraka Zakataya, Marebobo Shantanamada. You are the King of Glory. You are the King of Glory. Enter the month of July for our nations, Jehovah God. Come and rule and reign, our Father. Enter our families in the month of July. Come and rule and reign, our Father. Marebobo Shantanamada. Father, command victories. For your people in the month of July, command victories for our families this month. Command victories for the church this month. For the righteous Jehovah God. We celebrate you, Jesus. Command victories for somebody in the month of July. Command victories for Kenya. Command victories for the nations. Command victories for the church. Command victories for the righteous. Command victories for our children. Somebody declare that in the month of July, you're not going to struggle because God is commanding victories for your business. God is commanding victories for you in that office. God is commanding victories for your children. Oh, somebody declare in the month of July, we are pushing down our enemies through your help of a father. We shall push down our enemies in the month of July. In your name, we shall trample those that rise up against us because you are the great king. You are king in the month of July. You are our God in the month of July. Somebody lift up a praise, a praise that is a warfare. Somebody decree and declare as I pray you as I worship you you are reigning in the month of July commanding victories for us and when you help us I'm going to trample down my enemies 
and in your name I shall trample them to dust. Come on, this is a praise warfare. This is a warfare. This is a praise that is releasing the power of God into the month of July. You are my king. You are our king. You are our king. We have no other king. We have no other king. We have no other Lord. We have no other that we worship except you, God. Command victories for somebody today on the first day of July. Command victory for somebody's family. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are watching. We are waiting for you. Hallelujah. We are waiting for you to enter the month. We expect him, Lord. This is your month, Jehovah God. Somebody celebrate the Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Instruments, give us a sound of praise. Instruments give us a sound that is saying God is reigning in the month of July. Come on, instruments. Resha Nanamada. Resha Nanamada. Rebo This is a sound of triumph. Oh, it's a sound of triumph. Our God is king. He's entering the month of July and he's coming to reign. Your God is not coming to lose. Your God is entering your month so that he can rule, so that he can reign, so that he can give you victory, a sound of praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, we celebrate to Jesus. We celebrate to Jesus. Father, we are so mindful of what we do on the altar. You told your people in the book of Psalms 81 that every time the new moon came to usher a new month, they were to come with the sound of the trumpet. They were to come with tambourines. They were to come and celebrate you. It's not the time of a new moon, but it's the beginning of a new month. And we are bringing a sound of celebration. We are bringing a sound of victory. We are bringing a sound of glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah, we are celebrating. Hey, hallelujah, hey, yes, Lord, we celebrate you. A sound of victory, a sound of celebration, a sound of praise at the beginning of the month. Let the praise swallow up the curses. Let the praise on this altar swallow up the voice of the enemy. Somebody celebrate. We are transacting at the gate of the month on the altar of God. Somebody celebrate, celebrate, celebrate the Lord. Worship your God. Your God is King. Let the sound of our voice, our praise this afternoon, chase away the darkness, chase away the enemy. Scatter the wicked at the beginning of a new month. Our God is sitting on the throne. Our God is enthroned on the gate of a new month. Father God, as we celebrate you in the beginning of the month of July, come and rule and reign in everything that concerns us. Reign in our nations. Reign in our cities, reign in our families, reign in our lives, reign in our hearts, oh God. The month is yours, Jehovah God, and we are entering July triumphant. Come on, somebody celebrate the Lord. We are entering July with triumph, with victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. We are entering July. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, eh. It's a sound of victory. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing be this day. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, hey. it's a sound of victory. It's a sound of victory. Hallelujah, hey. 
of the month of July and package the things that you have kept for us in the month of July even on this altar as we transact with you king of glory and package the blessings the victory the deliverance the healings the salvations every good thing that you have kept for us in the month of July let it unfold let it be revealed let it come forth let it break forth in the spiritual realm in the physical realm in the mighty mighty name of Jesus somebody clap your hands and celebrate the Lord hallelujah 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 father we worship you. oh good afternoon people of God how are you today let's just celebrate the online church as they join us we love you we celebrate you ah is that how you celebrate people Come on, celebrate them better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Online Church, for joining us. Don't forget to share or like or subscribe to Apostle Julia Subi's page on Facebook. That's where we are at every day. And God bless you for joining us. Let's celebrate our praise and worship us. Thank you so much. Amen. And just look at somebody and wave at them and say, I celebrate you. It's a good month for you. Prophesy to them, it's a good month for you. <laughs> It's a powerful month for you. God bless you. Let's take our seats. Um, Apostle should be joining us uh, tomorrow for lunch hour and also for the evening prophetic service. Uh, I just want to kind of wind up what we had started because uh, we were looking at being wise as a child of God. And the example we had was David in the book of 1 Samuel 18, verse 14 to 16 and 30. David behaved himself wisely in every way. He behaved himself wisely. And because of that, he got a, a, a name that was highly esteemed. King Saul began to fear him. He got a lot of honor because of even the way he handled himself with the people. The Bible says that all of Judah and Israel, they love David. Why? He was a man of the people. Hallelujah. If you're a king, get the people to love you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the people also of the land loved him because he also handled himself wisely as he walked in and out of the people. And we looked at the altars of Balaam. Hallelujah. We saw how the, this, uh, di, uh, what did the Bible call him? Prophet, diviner. He had mastered the art of raising altars. And he used to raise seven altars with a burnt offering of a bull and a ram on every altar. And by the way, you need to understand, he was in the high places of Baal, but he's calling on Jehovah God. He's mixing. So you know the spirit of divination mixes the things of God and the things of, of the enemy. And there is a lying and a manipulation. And yet there is somehow also truth involved in all this. But we saw how um, the, the, the altars that Balaam raised were very powerful. And today I want us to just look at this thing called the burnt offering. Can you say burnt offering? Because every altar in the Bible, every altar if you look, 
that used to bring burnt offerings, there was always a breakthrough because this is the highest Old Testament sacrifice, the burnt offering. And uh, we want to see how it applies to us today because it is there. And uh, we want to connect the burnt offering of the Old Testament and our New Testament walk with God and see how we too can regularly bring burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord where there is always a breakthrough. Praise the name of the Lord when you do it correctly. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want us to look at Romans 12, 1. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, you use me to deliver your word to your people. Your word that will change, transform them. The way they, they come to your altar, the way they pray, the way they also approach you, Holy God, is going to change the way they have been doing spiritual things in your presence. And they shall see even changes and turnarounds and victories coming even easier because they are understanding how to work and cooperate with you at your altar. We thank you for your word. May every heart be open to receive your word. And may the Holy Spirit help us to, to understand spiritual truths as we speak spiritual truth to spiritual men by the help of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. I'm going to repeat it again. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, Paul is not commanding us. There are many times Paul writes and he says, I command you. You know, this is what the Lord should do. There's no negotiation. But when it comes to the, this living sacrifice, he says, I beseech you. He's begging us just to do it. Are you understanding me? And the reason he's not forcing us or telling us it's a commandment from the Lord to be a living sacrifice. Because the living sacrifice is the New Testament representation of the burnt offering. Praise the name of the Lord. So because of time, we won't go into Leviticus chapter 1. But I ask you to read Leviticus chapter 1 on your own and find out the law of the burnt offering. But I'll just quickly mention it because I have other scriptures I want us to focus on. The burnt offering was not a guilt offering. It was not a sin offering. It was not a peace offering. It was a sacrifice that the Israelites, they voluntarily brought to the altar of the Lord. Nobody, no priest, no high priest, no prophet asked somebody, come, I command you, bring a burnt offering. You yourself, as a worshiper of God, you felt, I want to worship God with a burnt offering. So, number one, it is voluntary. To bring a burnt offering was always voluntary. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why Paul is telling us, I beseech you. He's not forcing us or compelling us with even his apostolic authority, saying, I beseech you, brethren, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, the burnt offering in the Old Testament was the only sacrifice that was put on the altar and consumed completely by fire. Are you getting me? Other sacrifices, you could remove the fat, you could remove some other choice parts, and the other, the, the priests eat, or even you, you eat. Are you getting me? But the burnt offering was the only one that you had to bring it to the altar, and it had to be consumed by the fire of God on the altar. And remember, the fire of God on the altar on, in Israel, it was supernaturally started by the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. When, when Exodus 40, when Moses raised up the tabernacle in the wilderness, the, the Bible says fire fell from heaven. And because they now knew what to do, that fire never went out because there was always somebody to make sure the fire was burning. But the fire started supernaturally. Praise the name of the Lord. So even you, when you want to present your, 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 yourself as a living sacrifice, nobody can do it for you. Nobody can force you. Your pastor cannot force you to be a living sacrifice. Your husband or wife cannot force you to be a living sacrifice. You can't force your children to be a living sacrifice. It must be a free will offering given by somebody voluntarily to the Lord. Amen. So when, we, when Paul is saying be a living sacrifice, he is actually telling us in a coded spiritual language, put yourself on the altar. Put your whole body on the altar. 
I can't force you to do it, but you do it yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. So the burnt offering, it was put all of it on the altar. The only thing that wasn't burnt on the altar was the skin of the animal. The skin of the animal was removed and it remained with the priest. So my brother, my sister, if you're going to be on the altar of God as a living sacrifice, number one, you must make up your mind, I myself, Elizabeth, am the one who wants to bring myself as a living sacrifice. Amen. And then you bring all of yourself, but you leave the skin behind. What is the skin for us who are in the spiritual? You know, we are walking in, with Christ in a spiritual kingdom now. What is the skin? The skin is the coverings we have on us that are fake. Hallelujah. Don't come with hypocrisy and become a living sacrifice. Don't come with pride and lay yourself as a living sacrifice. Don't come with unforgiveness. Whatever is covering you that is not righteous, that is not pure, that is not blameless, don't bring it on the altar. That sacrifice you're bringing shall be rejected by God. And that's why we need to cleanse ourselves before I present my body as a living sacrifice. You pray prayers like this, Lord, search me. Is there any bitterness in me? Is there unforgiveness in me? Is there pride in me? Is there anything in me that is, makes, me, uh, blemishes, makes me to have blemishes? I don't want it as I surrender to you as a living sacrifice. The only thing, the only thing that can make you and I an acceptable burnt offering, hallelujah, an acceptable living sacrifice, the only thing that makes us acceptable is the blood of Jesus. There is nothing that can cleanse you and me to make us a living sacrifice before the Lord. Our good works cannot do it. Our emotions, good feelings cannot, do, cannot work like that. Only the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ can make you and I unacceptable. And this is our bodies. This is not a spiritual sacrifice. Eh? It is you bringing your body to the altar. And you see, in the Old Testament, the person who was bringing a burnt offering, he came with his... His, his, his cow, his goat, his ram, his sheep. And he brought it to the brazen altar. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it is you to bring yourself with your confession. God, I am coming to the altar as a living sacrifice today. Cleanse me. Sanctify me. So that when the fire falls on you, you are, on, uh, you are ablaze for the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Why is this important? Because of all the burnt offerings in the Old Testament... It's only the burnt offering that was not doing other work. Are you getting me? I could bring a sin offering that was coming to cover my sins. Are you getting me? I could bring a peace offering because I need peace with the Lord. I could bring a dedication offering because I want to dedicate my house or my child or something to the Lord. I could bring a cleansing offering because maybe I've been healed of leprosy. And this offering is saying the cleansing has happened. Are you getting me? So the burnt offering was the only sacrifice in the Old Testament that was purely for the Lord. And it was supposed to be consumed by fire and go up, you know, as it is burning, the sweet savor of the sacrifice is coming to the Lord. It means it's about worship. Are you understanding me? This burnt offering was worshiping the Lord. The, the giver of the burnt offering was telling the Lord, I'm so grateful to you. I'm so indebted to you. Without you, I'm nothing. I thank you, Jesus, for what you have done in my life. I thank you, Father God. It's not a vow. The burnt offering is not a vow. If I give you my life, you will save my family. If I give you my money, you will save my marriage. You, you know we make vows, eh? The burnt offering was not a vow. It just came purely to give God pleasure. Are you understanding me? And so um, you find that in the book of Genesis chapter 8, when Noah comes out of the ark, I think Genesis 8, 20, when Noah comes out of the ark, he, burn, he, he, he builds an altar and he brings a burnt offering of every clean animal that was on him, that was with him in the ark. And the Bible says that the Lord smelt the sweet savor of all those clean animals burning. And he said he would never destroy the world with a flood again. And he released the blessings of times and seasons on the earth. But jo uh, Noah never asked for anything. Are you understanding me? Noah came out of the ark. And he was like, thank you, thank you, Lord. You've brought us out of the ark. You've brought us out of this trouble. I'm not asking for anything, Lord. I just want to say thank you. I just want to worship you. And the burnt offering was a sweet savor unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So when Paul is telling us, be a living sacrifice, he's saying the living sacrifice isn't asking God for anything. 
God, I'm not going to serve you so my finances can change. God, I'm not going to worship you so that my health can improve. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're telling the Lord as a living sacrifice, I worship you, this body, I'm bringing it on the altar. This is a worship ascending to you, Father God, because I'm not asking you for anything. I just want to celebrate you. I just want to love you. If you bless me, you don't bless me, it's okay. If you speak to me, you don't speak to me, it's okay. If you do something for me or you don't, it's okay. I'm a living sacrifice. I belong to you. My time is yours. My thoughts are yours. My hands are yours. My legs are yours. My eyes are yours. Everything about me, it belongs to you. Receive the glory. I don't want anything from you. I just want to worship you. Praise the name of the Lord. That's how the burnt offering works. And that's why whenever anybody offered a burnt offering with a sincere and a pure heart in the Bible, God always answered. There's only one man I've read so far. Maybe there are. And the Bible says, do I desire burnt offerings and sacrifices? What I want is obedience. What God was saying there is, if you come and bring a burnt offering, if you come as a living sacrifice, but you have your own motives, you are in rebellion, you are in wickedness, it's not going to work for us. Praise the name of the Lord. So how you approach God, how you offer your body as a living sacrifice, it really matters because this is what Paul says, it is your reasonable service. Some other scriptures say it is your spiritual service. Praise the name of the Lord. This one is how I, serve, I, I worship the Lord. This one is something just for the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Imagine if you, the congregation were not here, if the physical church was not here, if the online church was not here, would I still be here? Would you still be? Me, I'd be here. Because me, I, I work in Mombasa Road where there is no congregation. We are still there. Hallelujah. But you get what I'm saying? That whether people are there or not, I have come to worship the Lord. Whether people are approving or not, I am here to bring a reasonable service to the Lord. Are you understanding, child of God? And I want us to look at... Um, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27. The law of the burnt offering, the, the spiritual impact of a burnt offering, it also works in the other kingdom. Let's look at this, 2 Kings 3:27. This, this was a time when the, uh, the Moabites were fighting Israel. And this is what the king of the Moabites did. He took his firstborn son, who was, was to succeed him as a king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. This king, there's a Bible version that says, he offered his son as a burnt offering on the wall. Can you imagine that you're in the middle of war, somebody slaughters a child, sets him on fire because he is serving his altar. And on the other side of that altar, receiving a burnt sacrifice of this firstborn boy, there is the gods of the Moabites. Are you getting me? I told you every altar has somebody on the other side. Every altar has somebody on the other line. And that somebody is waiting for the sacrifice of men. And when men bring acceptable sacrifices, whether it's the altar of God or the altar of the devil, power will be released for whoever is asking. Amen? So this king gives his son as a burnt offering. And the Bible says there was great indignation, great wrath against Israel. And so they left the battle. That sacrifice of a child as a firstborn son released demonic power and energy against Israel. They went back home. That shall never be your portion again in the name of Jesus. You're not going to be stopped by the burnt offerings of the enemy. When they sacrifice people, when your enemy decides I'm fasting 21 days for the devil, I'm not eating food so that I can destroy the child of God. The Bible tells us, as we read in the story of Balaam, the altar of God... What it was receiving is sufficient to destroy the altars of Balaam. No matter how much demonic energy the altars of Balaam are releasing. No matter how much wickedness Balaam is doing. And he's doing it in the right way in order to release a, a, a power to bless or curse. Praise the name of the Lord. So child of God, you need to understand sometimes our battles is not because God is not for you. It's because the enemy has raised such a high level of sacrifice. That witch who was fighting you, maybe they have told the enemy, I am not eating until this person falls. Every day you have three meals. 
can only know by revelation that this battle I need to fast. Because maybe that person is fasting against you. Maybe that person is holding a night vigil against you. Maybe they are meeting at 3 a.m. and you are fast asleep. They are releasing all the sickness, all the arrows, all the wickedness. You wake up in the morning and your day is just bad. But you didn't command the day. You didn't take care of the day on your altar. Praise the name of the Lord. So what we are saying is the altar is a place of transactions between men and the realm of the spirit. And those who serve the devil, they also transact with their God on their altars. But many times we as believers, we don't transact to the end of the issue. We don't transact with God on the altar to the end of the matter. Hallelujah. When a small miracle comes, you're like financial breakthrough in Mekuja. No. Sometimes you need to continue another 40 days because here it was just the sign you're on the track, but you have stopped prematurely and the miracle looks as if it disappears again. Praise the name of the Lord. So, child of God, the ministry of prayer and intercession, whether it is a personal altar, whether it is a family altar, whether it is a church altar, whether it is an altar that prays for the nation or nations, the ministry of prayer and intercession is not a casual thing. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in church, the devil has maybe lied to people in the church that prayer near wamama waze, old women, moms. <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes people ask me to pray, but I think they are asking me to pray, pray because I'm a mom and I pray. You get what I'm saying? Because then they don't want to pray. But what the enemy has done is to make to the normal Christian believer to think that prayer is, is, is casual. It is occasional. It's not serious business. I can survive without prayer. I can make it in education without prayer. Or, or rather, I can pray casually and I'm still getting breakthroughs. Are you understanding what I'm saying, child of God? But the ministry of prayer and intercession, it is the business of the house of God in the last days. And that's why the Bible says, in the last days, all the nations, the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted and the nations shall come streaming to the mountain of the Lord. And another scripture tells us that the house of God shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer is the main business of God in the days we are living in. It's not, it's not preaching. Hallelujah. Preaching is good. Teaching is good. But the Holy Ghost can teach you. You know, the Holy Ghost can teach you by yourself. The Bible says the unction remains in you and it teaches you all things. Sometimes you may not need a teacher, but you need to pray. Sometimes you may not need a preacher, but you need to pray. Sometimes you may not need ABCD, but you must pray. Because prayer is the main business in the house of God in this hour we are living in. So can you just talk to the Lord and tell him, teach me how to be a house of prayer. Make me a prayer warrior. Make me somebody who knows prayer, who dreams prayer, who eats prayer, who sleeps prayer. Because prayer is the business of your house in the last days. And I want to make it. I want my personal prayer altar to make it. I want my family altar to make it. When I pray for the nation, it will happen. The thing of God, the will of God will come to pass because I'm engaging in prayer for my nation with a passion because I understand the business, the ministry of prayer and intercession. It is so powerful. Somebody just clap unto the Lord and celebrate him. Just celebrate. I want us to celebrate him. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I never knew what an intercessor was. And I didn't know I was I'm not the greatest intercessor. There are guys who pray. I mean, they pray hours. Me, I have not reached that level yet. But the level, the measure God has given me of prayer, I want to pursue it and fulfill it in Jesus' name. But I never really knew what prayer was. But I could find that I am praying. I'm praying for nations. Oh God, I see a vision of a woman in a bui bui. I don't know who she is, but I'm sure I have to pray for her, whoever she is. I start praying. You, you, you get what I'm saying, eh? So this thing called prayer... God is not waiting. Uh, we are not to wait on God for prayer. God is waiting for us to arise in prayer. Amen. And prayer that moves mountains. Prayers that release of the will of God in your family. Prayer that changes the atmosphere in the office. Prayer that makes that stubborn husband to come back home. Hallelujah. You know men come back home because of prayer. I know we are told to dress nice. Wear those nice things at night. Hallelujah cook him good food, but when he goes, and you've been doing all that, engage the gear of prayer, hallelujah, 
engage that violent prayer that will cause him to have no peace where he is. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I'm talking from experience. I, I like sharing this testimony because, you know, some things happen to you and they help somebody. One day, my husband, I'm expecting, he came and told me, I am looking for wife number two. <laughs> uh, he wants my permission to get another wife. So I looked at him. We were in the world when we got together. But now he's telling me, I need your permission because he was a Muslim. Eh? So you need to ask the first wife to allow other wives to come into the relationship, the home. So me, I looked at him, I've just gotten saved and I'm confused. I thought God was going to work in my marriage. This is what is happening. Sometimes you pray and things get worse. Just like Egypt, Israel in Egypt. Moses came with a word of deliverance. Mambo ikaharibika zaidi. Sometimes we do that and we give up. Anyway, me, I told him, ah, if you get another wife, it's over between you and me. I didn't tell him anything. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't have tongues, but I knew how to call upon the name of the Lord. I said, God, save my marriage. God, do ABCD. God, this is too much. I can't handle this. Can't you see I'm expecting? He has no mercy. I prayed. One day he just came home, you know, looking embarrassed. Oh, she was such a foolish girl. I'm not going to marry her. Thank God for prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer can do things that no man can do. When you call upon the name of God, he can turn around situations that are impossible in the natural. And we need to come to that point as a people, as the child of God in this hour, that it's time to arise in prayer. It's not time to be silent. It is time to quicken, awaken your prayers in the family, in the office, wherever you are, in matatus, child of God. When you pray the God that you're calling upon, he's going to work for you. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, sometimes we want the, the mighty moves of God. They are good. They refresh us. They are exciting. But the business of prayer is the one of the ox. Hakuna mtu anaangalia oxen. When an oxen is plowing, nobody's looking. But at the end of the day, when the farmer has planted and sowed and reaped a harvest, nobody remembers the oxen. It plowed the ground which the farmer is enjoying a harvest. <laughs> are you getting me, child of God? Prayer is plowing. Plowing, 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 plowing so that God can move in our nations. Plowing in prayer so that God can move in our cities. Plowing in prayer so that God can move in our families. Plowing in prayer until there's a shift in the place where you work. But prayer needs people who are serious. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to wind up with us to just look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 19 and verse 23. First Samuel chapter 12, first Samuel chapter 12, verse 19 and 23. And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we may not die. For we have added to all our sins the evil of asking a king for ourselves. Verse 23, this is the reply of uh, Samuel. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Do you know, child of God, that if you refuse to pray when you know you should pray, it is sin? If you refuse to pray for your nation, when you know you're supposed to pray for your nation, it is sin. Are you getting me? You see, nobody wants to hear that. Because many of us don't pray. And you've never thought that prayerlessness is a sin. But refusing to pray, when you know you're supposed to pray, it is a sin. Can I repeat it again? Refusing to pray, when you know you're supposed to pray, it is a sin before the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Failing to pray for your children when you know you're supposed to pray for them, it is a sin. Failing to pray for Kenya, failing to pray for Jerusalem when we are called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it is a sin. Praise the name of the Lord. I know people don't want to hear that. But today I want to challenge you. Awaken and pray. Awaken and call upon the name of the Lord. Our father of faith, Abraham, the Bible says he was a builder of altars. The man knew how to engage the altars of God to take the land of Canaan. Yet he only owned a piece of ground, burial ground where they buried, he buried his dead. He never bought any land there except the place where he buried Sarah and the place where he was also buried. But do you know the altars that Abraham raised, that prayer and intercession that he did, is the one that took the land. What is going to take that business? It's your prayer. 
What is going to take that promotion? It's your prayer. What is going to take that husband or wife you're looking for? It is your prayer. Child of God, it's time to engage in prayer. It is time to pray for Kenya. You see the madness of politicians in our nation. Usiseme, you're tired. If you're tired, who will pray? If the people of God are tired, who is going to pray for our nation before the elections next year? It's up to you and I to say, God, you know what? Even if I'm tired and sick of these politicians, I'm going to pray. Because if it goes well with Kenya, it shall be well with me. If it goes well with Kenya next year, it shall be well with my family. If we have a peaceful election, it shall be well with us. But if, it go, if we don't pray and it goes bad, or we get a wicked king over us and we suffer, who can you blame but me for failing to pray? Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want to challenge us. The main business that we do on the altar, it is prayer praise, intercession, and maybe bringing your offerings and your seeds. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the main thing we do on the altar of the Lord. We worship him. We praise him. We intercede. We pray. And we bring our tithes and our other uh, physical offerings and money to the altar. That is it. But if you fail to engage in the one that is the most crucial, hallelujah, there is no need to bring a tithe and you're not praying. You know, people bring offerings and they don't pray about it. My friend, if you bring an offering and you just put it there, a seed, a seed, you bring a seed and you have not prayed about it, it may just lie there dormant in the ground until you awaken and say, that seed that I sowed God, let it work for me. Let it rem remember, remind you of me in heaven. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge us that in 2021 now we have crossed over to the second half of the year. We are now in July to December by the grace of God. If I'm going to see the supernatural increase, this is the word of the year for us as a ministry. 2021, the year of supernatural increase. If you have not seen supernatural increase, you have to go to another gear in the last six months of the year. We have to see supernatural increase. Supernatural increase is not for the lazy. Supernatural increase is not for the foolish. Supernatural increase is not for the disobedient. It is for those who know how to work the laws of the kingdom of God. It is for those who obey God when he gives instructions. It is for those who love God no matter what they are going through. God will bring supernatural increase if we do everything he asks us to do in even the remaining half of this year. Praise the name of the Lord. And so this afternoon... I'm not going to tell you be a living sacrifice. But if you feel you want to make a vow before the Lord to be a living sacrifice, not just by words alone, not just by the confession of your mouth, but the practical experience of being a living sacrifice, it shall be yours. Then you shall pray and God will do it. And on closing, I want to say this. The burnt offering, the blood was shed and they cut it into pieces. Being a living sacrifice means you're cut into pieces. Your hands are no longer doing what they want to do. They are being disconnected from the brain. Your legs are disconnected from the rest of the body. These legs cannot go where they want to go. They have to remain on the altar. Your mind cannot think what it wants because the head has been disconnected from the rest of the body. The burnt offering, it was cut in pieces, put in order, consumed by fire. But many times we say I'm a living sacrifice, but my feet go where they want to go. Hallelujah. I say I'm a living sacrifice, but I engage in the businesses that God is not calling me to engage in. I say I'm a living sacrifice. My tongue is doing whatever it wants to do. I say I'm a living sacrifice. I'm shaking hands with people who are ungodly and entering into partnerships and agreements with them. The living sacrifice, every part of your body is an instrument of righteousness. Your tongue, instrument of righteousness. Your eyes. <laughs> One day I went to pray for someone somewhere. And, uh, you know, he just told me. It was, it was a CEO of a bank. Of a circle, sorry, not a bank. You know what he told me? Your eyes are fire. I can't even look at your eyes. They are fire. Me, I didn't know my eyes were fire. But these eyes have been dedicated to as a living sacrifice. They can work the works of God anyway in Jesus' name. Are you getting me? You pass somewhere, you're a living sacrifice. And people just begin to shake. They start feeling convicted. Why? A living sacrifice carrying the glory of God has walked by. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want us this afternoon as we come to the end. I want you to ask the Lord. 
Forgive me. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. Actually, where we have been saying we are living sacrifices, but we are not. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us today. And let's ask him to help us to become living sacrifices on the altar. Because when we are living sacrifices, we shall surely burn for the Lord. And before I forget, Leviticus, I think chapter 6, verse 12 maybe, or something like that, 10 to 12. The Bible says that the burnt offering is supposed to remain on the altar all night. It's supposed to be burning the whole night in Israel. How long am I going to be a living sacrifice? All night. As long as there's darkness in your family, you remain a living sacrifice. As long as there's darkness on the earth, you remain on the altar as a living sacrifice. As long as there's darkness in your family, you do what? You remain as a living sacrifice. So let's stand up as we come to the end. Musilale <laughs> tafadhali. Let's stand up. And I want you to ask the Lord, forgive me. Where I've been saying with my mouth, I'm a living sacrifice. But my experience, my reality, even in heaven, I am not a living sacrifice. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us this afternoon in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come before you, King of all glory. And we humble ourselves. And we understand today that we are supposed to be living sacrifices. Not because we have been forced to. Not because we have been compelled by a man of God. But because we are volunteering to be living sacrifices. To bring you the highest worship as our bodies are surrendered and dedicated to you. And this afternoon we say, Lord, forgive us. Where my mouth has said I'm a living sacrifice, but my lifestyle is not agreeing with that. I have said I'm a living sacrifice, but some parts of my body, they are not surrendered to the Lord. This afternoon we say, Lord, come and do a work in us. That when we say we are living sacrifices, when we sing those beautiful songs saying we are living sacrifices is not just empty words, but the power of God is is moving and there are things happening and our bodies are laying on the altar and every part of us is being consumed by your fire in the name of Jesus. I don't know how many here, how many listening to the sound of my voice are telling the Lord I want to be a living sacrifice not just by words alone but by experience, by action, by the witness of heaven I am a living sacrifice just write, just decree and declare tell the Lord I want to be a living sacrifice not just by words not because I sang a sweet song and my emotions were stirred up but I voluntarily come to you this afternoon and say Lord make me a living sacrifice I want to be a living sacrifice I want to lie on your altar my body to come on the altar and as your fire burns me Jehovah God it's a sweet savor when I intercede after that the answers come when I pray your will is released oh God some Somebody open your mouth and tell the Lord, make me a living sacrifice for real. Make us living sacrifices for real. Lord, I pray for somebody watching online that is saying they want to be a living sacrifice, not just by mere words, but by the experience that thing shall be testified in heaven that this one is a living sacrifice. When God is looking for hands, he can use your hands. When God is looking for feet, he can use your feet. When God is looking for eyes, he can use your eyes. When he's looking for a body to use, he can use you because you are a living sacrifice. Somebody just tell the Lord, make me a living sacrifice. If you know and you know and you know that in your heart of hearts, this word is for you. Just speak to the Lord wherever you're watching, wherever you are. Just speak to the Lord and tell him, I'm coming to the altar. I'm presenting myself on the altar and with my own mouth, I'm confessing. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm a living sacrifice. I put my whole body on the altar. I put my entire being on the altar. Come and set me on fire for your glory. Let the smell of my body burning be a sweet incense to you. Let the smell of this living sacrifice be a sweet savor to you. Let my life of worshiping you with my body be acceptable to you now and forevermore. If you know you're the one, I want you to record this day in your diary. Just remember this day because we are 
transacting with the altar of the Lord concerning being a living sacrifice and God knows how to remember what you have done and God knows how to release the grace for you to be a living sacrifice transactions are being done in the realm of the spirit for everybody that is hearing the word of the Lord to become a living sacrifice not just by words or by singing or by songs but I real desire of the heart that God will accept that God will receive in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father you know the hearts of your people you know the ones who have received this word today you know where they are watching from you know where they are oh God even in the household in the sanctuary today mark them Put them on your register. The ones who have sincerely received this word, write their names in the books of heaven. Write their names down in the register of those who are living sacrifices. Because when you are a living sacrifice, you are now like Jesus. When we are living sacrifices, we have become like Jesus. Our time is not our own. Our days are not our own. Our bodies are not our own. We are just being used for the glory of God. And when you become a living sacrifice, you become a true son of God. Because Jesus, the son of God, he gave himself as a living sacrifice so that we may be saved. So the nations may be saved. And as we join Jesus on being a living sacrifice, things are happening. Things are changing in our lives. Father God, we say thank you. I want you to just tell the Lord thank you. Just tell the Lord thank you. The Bible says that just live by faith. By faith you believe this afternoon. When you have expressed the desire to God to be a living sacrifice, by faith you receive it. By faith you believe it. By faith you understand that transaction has happened and God has received your body as a living sacrifice. God has received you as a living sacrifice upon this altar today and he shall begin to do wonders with you. He shall begin to walk with you in a way you have never known. He shall begin to use you in a way that you can never imagine because today, today, today we have become real sacrifices. We have become real living sacrifices before our Father. In Jesus name, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Just tell the Lord thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it for us. Thank you for everybody that has heard this word and that has responded in faith and they have moved according to your leading Lord. Do something Lord to confirm it to them that they have been accepted as a living sacrifice today. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. Father we thank you and even as we give dear Lord we give us living sacrifices, oh God. We give us people whose money no longer belongs to us. But our money, it belongs to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father God, sanctify the giving and the offerings of your people today. And Lord, let it be that what they give on the altar this afternoon, whether by uh, uh, mobile transactions, bank transactions, or physical transactions, let what they give on this altar today, as a result of this message, let it be a testimony that they are living sacrifices and the grace of God shall move on them like never before. In Jesus' name, somebody lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. And get ready, bring your offering for those who are here. Bring your offering here in front. And even as we release the online church, there's an atmosphere of worship. Let's worship the Lord. Even as we prepare to pray for Israel altar after this. Those who are here in the sanctuary, bring, bring your sacrifice. Even as we thank God. You can do it by M-Pesa. I want us to just worship. Worship because also this afternoon we pray for Israel. And these things that we are implementing in our lives, the foundation is in Israel. The roots of our faith is in Israel. And so we just want to worship the Lord who found a man called Abraham who was so faithful that the Messiah was able to come. God found a man called David who was so faithful that the Messiah sat on the throne of David. And today we are saved because of the faithfulness of Abraham. Today we are saved because of the faithfulness of David. All these men in the Bible, they prepared the platform for Jesus to come.
And when Jesus came, he came to fulfill the law. He did not come to break it, but to fulfill it in us who are in the spirit. So I want to just, just worship the Lord and tell him, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Had it not been for Abraham, where would Jesus have come from? Oh Lord, we want to say thank you. All the things that encourage us in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the words that strengthen us, the scriptures that speak into our lives, the testimonies we read in the word of God, all of them have come because of somebody who was faithful in Israel, because of believers who are faithful in Israel. And this morning we want to return thanks to you, oh God, for the nation of Israel, for Jerusalem, your city, and above all for Messiah. Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who by bloodline is a Jew and remains a Jew forever. Even though he's our Messiah, by the lineage of men, he is known as an Israelite. He is known as a Jew and he remains the King of the Jews forever. Somebody just worship the Lord. Just tell the Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All the burnt offerings that were shed from the days of the Old Testament up to today, they were just preparing the way for the true burnt offering, Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you, King of all glory. We say thank you, King of all glory, for all the mysteries of worshiping you that are hidden in Israel that we can interpret and understand and walking today because of Jesus. Secrets about how to worship you. Mysteries about how to connect with you that are hidden in the Jewish culture, hidden in the things that you gave them, the instructions that you gave them. But today it is for our benefit. The Holy Spirit is unlocking all the things about the worship of the Lord that was hidden in Israel, hidden in their culture, hidden in the temple worship, but revealed in Christ for our generation. Father God, we say thank you, King of all glory, that the Messiah came on the platform laid for him by Israel. We say thank Thank you, Jehovah God. Even as I invite the ladies of the Israel altar, Father, we say thank you.